I inform the Senate that at 8.30 a.m. today, 11 proposals were received in accordance with Standing Order 75. The question of which proposal would be submitted to the Senate was determined by lot. As a result, I inform the Senate that the following letter has been received from Senator Waters. Dear Mr President, Pursuant to Standing Order 75, I propose that the following matter of public importance be submitted to the Senate for discussion to mark the Senate's involvement in the Girls' Takeover Parliament, the issues of concern to young women in Australia. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I shall ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly, and I call Senator Di Natale. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy. Oh, pardon, I was Senator wondering. Yes. I miss, uh, I'll just need to check that the um, proposal is supported. Thank you. And please begin at the beginning, Senator Di Natale. That's a good place to start, uh, <laughs> Madam Deputy President. I want to use my short contribution to quote Sanjoli, who's one of the women taking part in the Girls' Takeover Parliament in the Greens' offices today. Her speech reflects the very deep worries and concerns, but at the same time the hope that young people have for their future. While both the major parties are flat out rejecting their concerns in their efforts to get more coal, oil and gas projects up and running, she's got some very strong words to say, and I want to get them on the record. Some facts about last year. Sydney saw the hottest summer day in 80 years with temperatures at over 47 degrees Celsius. We also experienced the worst living drought in memory. Queensland alone fought with 200 bushfires and around 30 per cent of the corals on the Great Barrier Reef have died since 2016. Our children don't deserve to go through this at all. Our women don't deserve it because they're the worst affected by climate poverty. Our Aboriginal brothers and sisters don't deserve to see their culture die. The Great Barrier Reef alone provides work for 60,000 people, and if the reef dies, there will be social repercussions. Dissatisfaction and frustration among young people already at record levels will deepen, and social unrest will give rise to uprisings. Our learned members of the ruling party seem not to understand the gravity of the situation. That's the reason that mining goes about unabated, that greenhouse gas emissions still at, high, at a high rate, uh, with us shamefully uh, failing to meet the goals of the Paris Agreement, and the Adani mine is welcomed with open arms. Since we don't have another planet to run away to and we have to pass on a legacy to future generations, we need to take action. And we have to act now. Time's ticking away and our children are looking to us with hope. We can't disappoint them anymore. We need to realise the urgency of the situation. We need to withdraw all of our support for the Adani mine. We need to switch to clean energy, to cut down on fossil fuels and to adopt renewable energy, which Australia has in abundance. All we need is political will, empathy and accountability towards the cause and towards the people, all of which seem to be lacking. The on-the-ground reality is people protesting, shouting their throats out to stop Adani to take measures, but it's falling on deaf ears. All that concerns the Liberals is profits at the cost of the environment. So it's hope with a, for a better future that I conclude with Gandhi's words, be the change you want to see in the world. It is up to us. Uh, Madam Deputy President, I couldn't have said it better myself. It's about time we started listening to people Thank like you, Senator Senator Jolly. Jolly. 